Hey guys. Yeah, if it looks like I'm a little uh, <laughs> messed up, I just got out of the shower. I'm getting ready for work. Uh, but I wanted to come on here while I could. It's about 6.56 in the morning. I still got time before I have to get out to the bus. Oh, I was go to work. But I wanted to come on here, like I said, and talk about the fact that, well, recently I watched one of Lily Orchard, Lily Pete's, uh, videos they did a couple of years ago. And when I mean couple, basically you could look at the character design and tell it was at a time when they were sort of still associate when they were sort of still associated uh, with F O B Equestria, Fob Equestria, and Josh Scorcher, aka Firebrand. And To say that the video they did, and you kind of see what it's a you see the title of the video they did because it's a response to that. It was basically known as Best Binya, you know, because they took the last few word, last few letters, I should say, of the word lesbian, and just doing Best Binya or whatever. Uh, they just you know made the title out of that. <laughs> anyway. I listened to what they had to say, and, you know, Lily, whether you like Lily or you don't like Lily, whatever, whether you agree with Lily's points or you don't agree with Lily's points, uh, they have, you know, Lily has a right to the, you know, to their opinion, to her opinion. Um, again, whether you like Lily or you don't like Lily, he slash her, you know, um, has a right to their opinion, to their opinion. And when Lily did this video, they brought up, in their opinion, what character they felt best represented a good enough chance at being an LGBT, an LGP, an LGBTQ, an LGBTQ uh, character. And in their opinion, they felt it was rarity. And again, they have a right to their opinion. Don't get me wrong. They have a right to their opinion and why they feel this way. But, there might be some that disagree with how they look at it. I mean, one, yes, rarity could be a good example of this. One of the traits they point out that kind of uh, support this is rarity's trait of flirty. Mostly to get what she wants, to, in some cases, like with Spike, encourage them, whatever, uh, you name it. And the other thing Lily brought up, and it's no secret to anybody in the Brony Pegasista community, that Rarity is one of the, is probably the only character in the main six, main seven, that has shown any interest in romance and starting a relationship. Even though a lot of us will come out and say, like myself, Voice of Reason, the Brony Critic, uh, like I said, the Brony Critic, um, I Love KP a lot, Sweetie Bloom, um, Cartoon Gentleman, you name it. Um, there's a lot of us that will basically come out and say, yeah, you're looking to have a relationship rarity, yet your Prince Charming in your knight in shining armor has been standing in front of you since almost day one that this series began. And now it's taken basically, what, up to eight seasons, eight and a half if you count uh, Best Gift Ever, for you to realize that? I'm just saying. But, the point is, you know, Rarity is the only character that's shown, shown that in, the major, in a major capacity. Now, true, it's kind of died down a little bit, and it looks like, I'm guessing the writers at Hasbro are realizing, okay, you know, we could be reaching the end here. Let's just go and do what's obvious. Let's just put her with Spike in some kind of form or fashion. But, that aside, when someone says, in their opinion, that Rarity best exemplifies a character that's bisexual just by the certain traits and personality quirks that's 
that's something that's been talked about since the beginning since of the series and not just about rarity we're talking about the entire main six to main seven and any characters associated with them and yes this would include characters like Lyra and Bonbon, bon, who many look at as the best representation of an LGBTQ couple. And that might be true. And here's the thing though about Lyra and Bonbon. Bon. Lyra and Bonbon, bon, they're sort of, sort of semi-minor secondary characters that show up and are showcased when they are needed. So when you take a look at characters like them, and I'm, I know I'm going to get some flack for this, but characters even like Big Mac and Mod Pie, that even though these four characters combined are very popular, fans love these characters, they want to see more of them, the secondary minor role characters. And they only show up or only part of something when they're needed. Which is why... Hasbro and the writing staff behind Friendship is Magic is able to get away with the fact that they could hint at the idea that Lyra and Bonbon bon are an item, an LGBTQ item, and which is why they can give Mod Pie and Big Mac relationships with other characters. Big Mac with Sugar Bell, Mod Pie with Mud Briar. So when it comes to the main six, main seven, relationships are kind of up in the air, even though they can acknowledge and tease something, and maybe even in the case of Spike and Rarity, which I'm personally hoping for, is made semi-official and canon come the next season. Relationships and romance are kind of on the burner a little bit, or up in the air, I should say. Because there are certain rules and restrictions the writers have to follow, whether they want to follow them or they don't. And one of them is you could probably tease romance, you could tease relationships, but you can't follow through on it. I mean, they could have easily, what is it, after, after the episode Simple Ways? They could have easily said, let's put Applejack with Tenderhoof and Rarity be totally cool with it. They didn't. They could have easily, after Equestria Girl's Roller Coaster of Friendship, put Rarity and Applejack together as the first main cast lesbian couple, but they didn't. Yeah, they hinted at something there between them, but they didn't follow through on it. The point is, you know, the point is we can acknowledge and point out, you know, through the personality quirks and traits, why a certain character falls into that category. This is something that's been going on since the series became the phenomenon it is. Started to really take off. I mean, you could take Rarity out of the subject of Lily's video, and you could put any character in there, and it would be the same thing. Applejack. You could, put, you could take Rarity out, you could put Applejack, I should say. Uh, you could take Rarity out, you could put Pinkie Pie. You could take Rarity out, you could put Rainbow Dash. You could take Rarity out, you could put Twilight. You take Rarity out, you could put Fluttershy. You could take Rarity out, you could put Starlight. You take Rarity out, you could put Sunset Shimmer. You take Rarity out, you could put Celestia or Luna or Cadence. It doesn't matter who, you know, what character you talk about and feel best represents being a lesbian character or bisexual character. It's a discussion that's been done since the beginning. And everybody has a right to their opinion as to who they feel best represents being an LGBTQ character. Some will still go the route of Rainbow Dash. And if you don't believe me, people will look at, you know, books or other forms of Friendship as Magic Media that would further evidence this. Especially when you have uh, Rainbow Dash's little sister, if you will, Scootaloo, who, um, that, you know, that has family that watches her, that takes care of her, that's basically lesbian. And you have the writer of the freaking book acknowledging that. So it's early. I'm kind of trying to do this quickly because i got to get ready to get on the bus in a little while. But basically, 
like I say, you take Rainbow Dash, for example, who's been the prime target of this, and then you, like I said, you take the her little sister Scootaloo, and then you take a take one of the uh, Ponyville mystery books recently, and basically it's acknowledged there, or hinted at, and even acknowledged by the writer later on, that the ants that Scootaloo is living with are lesbian. They are an item. They are a couple. But that's because of background characters even in media. Even in other forms of media. Which is why the writers can get away with that. You can get away with certain tropes and stuff in media. A good example of that is Sonic the Hitchhog, which I've been a fan of, and Sonic the Hitchhog Sat AM, if not Sonic the Hitchhog when it was under the Archie Comics license. Basically, they had so much opportunity to go so far with Sonic and Sally's relationship, and they did to a point come issue, what was it, 124, that they couldn't have followed through on it. They couldn't. Nope. About 10 issues later, they had to throw it out the door, and it took several different writers to kind of fix the problem and fix the friendship and relationship between the two characters. But the reason it happened is because basically they were going in a direction where in 124 Sonic popped the question to Sally to be his fiance or his or her consort, her royal consort, which is basically another term for engaged, fiance, you know, set to be married kind of deal. So what did what happened? They wiped that all out. And like I said, it took several writers to fix the problem. But what did they do instead? What did one of those writers do instead? Knowing that they couldn't go that route, they went the other route and took basically two other main characters that could look be looked at as secondary characters, as much as I hate to say that, in Antoine de Coolet and Bunny Rabot and had them get married as basically, um, uh, as basically an answer to having at least two members of the group come together full circle as an item. See, the point is, and I know I'm going off a little bit on a tangent because I'm in a hurry and I do apologize. The point is, um, in the long run, when you, when you look at who you feel best represents uh, being bisexual, being an LGBTQ character, that's in MLP, FIM, or MLP, EQG, it doesn't matter who, it doesn't really matter because everybody's going to have their difference of opinion. Lily, back then, and I don't know if Lily stands by it today, has their opinion about rarity. And that's fine. I'm, I'm sure Lily's not alone in that. I'm sure Lily's not alone in that. But the point is, the point is, in the long run, ladies and gentlemen, is everybody has a right to their opinion, whether we like it or we don't. And in the long run, this has been something of, People asking and talking about who they feel is best Banya or Binya or whatever. Um, we've had that question asked since the beginning. So it's nothing really new. But anyway, I know I sounded like I rambled a bit and went off on a bit of a tangent. But I thought I'd come on here and do a bit of a response to Lily's video that they did. Lily did, I should say, a couple years back. Again, I don't know if they, Lily still stands by those opinions. But again, it's her, it's Lily's opinions. And like I said earlier, whether you follow Lily or you don't like, or you don't follow Lily, or you like Lily or you don't like Lily, you know, what she, what Lily said here is there is her opinion. And, and we got to respect that. Because again, like I said, you can take rarity out of the equation and you put any other character in there. And it's all about basically what traits and personality quirks kind of represent them going in that direction so um anyway though that's all i'm gonna really say on it guys let me know what you think down below i'll provide a link if you want to check it out to lily's video on it and i will talk to you later i gotta get myself ready for work